Let's now move to the topic of statistical transformations. So if you take a look at this data set, there is an inbuilt data set called diamonds inside ggplot. So you don't have to really load anything. On the moment you've load, loaded ggplot, which you do when you say library tidyverse, you load ggplot. And along with that comes a data frame called diamonds. This is an inbuilt data frame, so you don't have to read it. So I'm saying ggplot data equals diamonds. And I'm introducing a new geom. This is called geom bar. It's a bar chart. And mapping is aesthetic x equals cut. Now cut is one of the columns in the diamonds data frame. And for associated, there are about 50,000 rows in that data frame. It's quite a big data frame. And associated with every row is a value for the cut of the diamond. There are different types of cuts as defined in the diamond industry, right? So for every single piece of diamond of the 50,000 diamonds, it is described by a certain kind of cut, right? So when you say geom bar, what you're really trying to do is to say, give me the counts, plot the counts of the diamonds of each type of cut, okay? So cut is not... A numeric value it's a factor right? so you can see here that the values of cut range from fair good very good premium and ideal and these are the numbers of those different values within the data frame okay so you can see here that there are more than uh, what you would say 22,000 diamonds which are of ideal cut and there are roughly six uh, uh, 14,000 or 13,500 diamonds which are of premium cut and so on and so on. Okay, so that's what a bar uh, is doing. It's just counting the values, uh, the number of cases of a factor. In this case, the factor happens to be cut. Okay, so bar plots, what they do is they automatically, I wouldn't say bin the data, but you can say bin the data based on the values of uh, the, of the variable that you're talking about and they tell you how many uh, values exist for each value of cut. Okay, so that's what a bar plot does. Histogram also does something similar. No wonder histogram looks similar to this. But there's a big difference between, a subtle difference between geom bar and geom histogram. Geom bar is drawn on factors, okay, or discrete values. It might be even a character field. It's drawn on discrete values, right? So there are only these values, fair, good, very good, premium, and ideal. Those are the only possible values for cut. But of course, you already know that when you draw a histogram, you're drawing it on a numerical variable, right? So for example, you can draw a histogram of miles per gallon. Or in the diamonds case, you can draw a histogram of the price of each of the diamonds, okay? So in that case, what uh, R is doing is uh, creating bins or ranges of values and counting how many values fall within each range. Okay, so the big difference between geom bar and geom histogram is that geom bar is drawn on uh, factors and character variables and geom histogram is drawn on numerical variables. Okay, so bar plots, histograms and frequency polygons, all of them somehow or other count the number of data falling in a particular range or number of data having a particular value and they plot those. Smoothers like for example geom smooth what they do is they fit the data and plot the fitted or predicted values and box plots we know they compute a robust summary and plot a specialized box. Now what is the difference between these charts and let's say a scatter plot? There is a very fundamental difference between these plots and scatter plots can you maybe you should pause the video think a little bit about how a scatter plot differs from these plots and then continue once you think you have an answer okay so i'm assuming you've given it some thought and you have some idea about how a scatter plot fundamentally differs from these the point is that let's say you have a data set with uh, 200 rows of data with no missing values okay when you do a scatter plot you expect to get 200 points plotted okay so scatter plot has a one-to-one -one correspondence with the underlying data 
Okay, so if there are 200 rows, you will see 200 points. If there are 500 rows, you should expect to see 500 points, but of course there might be a little over plotting, but fundamentally 500 points were plotted. Okay, that means there was no transformation of the data that took place. The data was plotted as it was, no transformation. Whereas when you're talking about bar plots and histograms and all of these, the data is not plotted as it is. Some kind of computation is performed on the data, meaning transformation is performed on the data, and it is the transformed value that is plotted. Okay, so that's a big difference between scatter plots, which plot the raw data, and all of these other plots, which plot something that is computed based on the underlying data. Okay, so there is this notion within ggplot called stat. We won't be using it much, but I just want to highlight it for you. A stat is a method or algorithm used to compute new values to plot, like histograms or bar plots or frequency polygons or box plots, what all they do, right? So each of them, of course, uses a different method to compute what to plot. A box plot computes the first quartile, third quartile, etc., etc., median and outliers and so on and plots that whereas a histogram bins the data and counts how many values file fall in each bin it plots that or, or a smoother which is geom smooth what it does is it computes the smooth line or the linear regression line and plots that so each thing does something differently but each of them is performing a different computation and that's computation the method is called stat okay now, if you do help on geom bar, for example, if you did question mark geom bar on the console, you will of course get the description for that geom bar function. And if you look closely at it, it'll tell you that there is the notion of a default stat for every geom function. For every geom function, geom underscore x function, it has associated with it a stat. Okay, so every time you call the function and don't tell it anything about the stat, it's going to use its default stat. And it turns out that geom bar uses what is called as stat count. Because after all, it is going to count how many values are there for each of the uh, levels of that particular variable. Okay, so that's what geom bar does. So when you did a geom bar, this is what happened. This is your underlying data set, diamonds data set. Okay. What it did was we said, I want to plot a bar plot of the cut of each diamond. Okay, notice that there is a column in the diamond called cut, uh, which is not shown here, a cut. Of course, there it is. Okay, so what the plot transformation, automatic transformation or stat count does is, it says for every value of cut, so that's what you're seeing here, fair, good, uh, very good, premium, ideal. For every value of cut, it counts how many values of, uh, how many are there of that value. So for example, within the data set, there are 1610 diamonds having a fair cut and 21,551 having an ideal cut. Okay, so it first produces this. For every value of cut, how many are there? We'll come to this proportion later, prop, we'll come to that later. So it does that and then it plots that, right? So notice fair, it's plotted whatever 1610 that probably is the value here this is 5000 so that seems about right and for ideal is a little more than 20000 it says 21551 we'll take that okay so that's what happened so instead of as in the case of a scatter plot directly plotting the points geom bar transformed the data and plotted the transformed data that's the big difference okay so it turns out that within ggplot, uh, ggplot, every geom has a default stat. So for example, geom bar had stat count as its default stat. And it turns out that every stat also has a def def default geom. Okay. So in fact, you can do this. You can say ggplot data equals diamonds. And then you can actually say stat count mapping AES x equals cut. It will produce exactly the same graph, right? Because every stat has an associated default geom. And the geom of stat count happens to be uh, geom bar. Okay, so this will work, but this is not something we'll be using at all. I'm just pointing it out as a way of giving you a little bit of inside information on ggplot. You can actually replace the stat, right? Because after all, when you say geom bar, by default, it does stat count. But you can tell it, look, don't do stat count, do what I tell you to do. 
So for example, here, what I'm doing is I'm creating a data frame by using this function called triple. Ignore the function for the time being. We'll be covering it in somewhat greater detail later in the course. But what we are doing is basically creating a data frame with two columns called A and B. Okay, again, don't worry about the details of the triple function. All you want to understand is that I'm creating a data frame with two columns called A and B. The first column has values bar 1, bar 2, bar 3. And the second column has values 20, 30, and 40. That's your entire data frame that we're creating with this function. Okay, so now I want to plot a bar chart of this, right? Which means I want it to say bar 1 and plot a bar which is 20 units high, bar 2, 30 units high, bar 3, 40 units high. I don't want the system to do any transformation of this. I'm saying, look, I already know what values are going to appear on the x-axis, y-axis. Just plot it for me. That's all I want you to do. I don't want you to do any computation, right? So you can do that. And the way that is done is geom bar again, mapping equals, this time I say x and y. I say x equals a, which is this column, y equals b, which is that column, okay? But I need to tell it, please withhold your uh, stat. Don't use your stat. So I want to say stat equals identity which means plot the data as they are. That's what it means, identity. I want the plot to identically reflect what is in the data. So that is what stat equals identity means. So what this does is, this inhibits geom bar from applying its default stat count to the data. You're telling it, look, hold on, don't do anything with the data plotted as it is, and you get this plot. Okay, so bar one, bar two, bar three, bar one is 20, bar two is 30, bar three is 40 just as expected, okay? So make sure you understand this very carefully because it so happens that very often we will perform certain computations and we'll want the system to plot the bars as they are, okay? This is something we will do quite frequently when we analyze data, right? Of course, right now, we haven't looked at all the different functions we have for summarizing data, but very often we'll summarize data and then tell the system, look, I've got the data here, just plot it. Okay, so this is important to understand.